survive to sleep after one hour. That's true. I have to remember. No, no, hour and a half. Is the event two hours? Time. Yeah. Four. Five. Okay. Start video. I've got to get sent. I did. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Is your script? Does this work? No, it's not. Okay. 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 Thank you. So welcome um, to Inform Your Community's Crafting event. Um, we are so happy to have you all here today. Um, and my name is Stacy. I'm going to be doing um, all, all the roles today. Usually if you've come to our, our event before, we have a few other people here helping facilitate, but we do have Mike here doing tech for us. So if you have any comment to any problems, Mike is here. Um, but I'm going to be helping us um, uh, doing the craft. I'm going to talk about our topic, which is food waste today. And I'm going to do our introduction and conclusion. Uh, usually we have some other folks helping us out. But today, solo show or nearly solo show. We still have we do have Mike helping us out. So thank you for coming to this Inform Your Community Celebrate and Create event. My name is Stacy. My pronouns are she and her. I am wearing a black turtleneck, which I very much hope the weather gets warmer so that I won't need to do that anymore, as well as a sweater and um, a, a kind of a greenish bluish sweater. And I have short gray, silver gray hair, black and pepper hair. And um, closed captioning should be enabled. So if you would uh, like to turn that on, you're welcome to turn that on. Uh, at Inform Your Community, we offer events that are fun, but are also infused with important, impactful information. And um, so you can always visit us at www.informyourcommunity.org. Uh, and you can find our social media links at the bottom of that page. Um, tell your friends to sign up uh, at the top of our page, as well as if you can, we always encourage donations. Um, all of our events are free. We ship the materials free and we don't charge for our materials. So any uh, amount you can donate definitely helps. Uh, if you're watching the recording of this video, uh, please do take a moment to like and subscribe. And we we uh, look forward to seeing you on YouTube. So this is this event is part of our Celebrate and Create program. And so what we are going to be talking about today is food waste. But in our Celebrate and Create program, we, um, we do some craft activity, which we uh, then while we're doing the activity, we talk about some issues. So food waste is a really important topic. Uh, both WWF and Tesco um, mentioned that um, of all the food grown, approximately 40% goes uneaten, which is, you know, not a lovely statistic, right? Um, so through this craft, we're going to tell you some more about food waste and what we can do to, um, to avoid food waste. Um, and if you have questions, if you want to say anything, you can always write in the chat. We'd love to see your work as it's going along or toward the end. So feel free to um, turn your camera on if you like. And um, I'm going to get us started. So um, for today's craft, um, we want to understand this topic because there's just a lot of food wasted, as I said. Uh, in addition to what I mentioned before, the American consumer spends about $1,300 on food that they do not eat, which is crazy. Um, but at the same time, 10.5%, and that's 13.8% million, I want to make sure I got that right, 13.8 million of U.S. households are food insecure or were food insecure in sometime in 2020, okay? So 10%, 10.5% of U.S. households don't have enough food to eat, and yet we're wasting food, right? Um, and there's food that's going uneaten. And so the, my inspiration for this craft was the idea of Tupperware, just that simple idea of those containers, that, well, that's a brand name, but it's basically containers we, we use to store food and how important that is. And that was only created in uh, 1946 that we had these Tupperware to use to store our food. And that helps us avoid food waste because we can take what we haven't eaten and we can then store it away for later and eat it at a later time. Um, over 200 years ago, there was another technology or tool that came about to help us store food. And that was canning you know those cans we get sometimes maybe we have canned vegetables canned corn canned peas or canned string beans 
1809, the canning process was first invented by a Frenchman named Nicolas Appert. Um, so that also helped us with preserving food because food can last in cans for a really long time. Uh, and in those days, if you were going on a, a long, you know, boat, uh, um, uh, you were taking a boat ride somewhere that might take months to get somewhere, having those, those, um, having things you can store um, that wouldn't get, you know, yucky, um, would is, is helpful. So canning is really important. Also, refrigerators. We don't we take for refrigerators for granted, right? But refrigerators are a helpful tool too. So from 1930 to 1940, in that 10 year period. The percent of families that owned a refrigerator jumped from 8% to nearly 50% in just 10 years. And you can imagine how great an invention that was to have a refrigerator where you can store your food in um, so that you wouldn't have to wait it. So there's all these ways that we have available to us to make sure we're not wasting food. So speaking of making the most of our tools, we also have our craft kit today, which is what we're going to talk about now is what materials are in our craft kit. So hopefully um, you've gotten our craft kit. And if you have, what you're going to find there are a few things. First of all, and if you can't see, you may just be looking at me right now, but if you um, scroll or, or swipe on your camera, you may see the uh, camera angle that also has the picture of the materials. Um, so feel free to do that. Otherwise, maybe you can see both of us at the same time. So we have some kind of a container. If you have our kit, a little box, oops, yeah, I'll put on this one too, a little box of some kind. We're only going to be working with the top um, of that box. You've got a container of glue and a, a, a white glue is totally fine. Um, and just so you know, if you're doing this craft at home, these same things are what you're going to find around your house. You can find some kind of a container, a box, a jewelry box works great. If you have an old jewelry box, perfect to use. Um, anything cardboard, because that holds the liquid really well. Um, but also you can find online tutorials for how to make boxes. I remember my kids used to make those when they were younger, they used to make their own boxes. Um, we also have the white glue, like I mentioned. So we have to, um, for your craft kit, if you don't have it, if you don't have our craft kit, you can use these materials at home as well. So find some kind of a container, a cardboard container. You can have some white glue. You wouldn't uh, be able to really use stick glue for this, you, but you could use a clear glue would work just as well. I find white glue is, is the perfect um, for this. And also you will want to have some kind of tissue paper from our kit. That's easy because we sent it to you. So we have tissue paper in the kit, which is great, little squares. But if you don't have our kit, then what you can do is just go ahead and use um, uh, go ahead and use a um, what am I thinking? Go ahead and use paper towels or napkins. Both of those are pretty sturdy because you can imagine you want to be able to um, soak up like the liquid. And that's what paper towels or napkins are made for. So if you have paper towels or napkins, that will help you. And then the last piece, so it's a really kind of easy, easy kit this time around. For those of you who've seen our crafts before, the last thing you need, and here you can a little see it there, but I'll put it on this as well and bring it up for you, is if you have our kit, then there's some jewels. Oops, sorry, looking for the, there you go. There's some jewels that came with the kit. There you go. Um, but you can use any kind of jewels you have at home. Really, any embellishments will do. I wouldn't use stickers because the stickers won't stick to glue. They'll just kind of fall off. But you could use um, cutouts from magazines, especially if it's a cardboard cutout, like um, from a cereal box. That would work. That would work well because that would be nice and sturdy to be able to adhere to the glue. So um, if you if you have our kit or if you don't have our kit, it's basically the same four materials that you need. Having said that, um, the other thing that everybody needs, regardless of whether you have our kit, is going to be what we put in the chat earlier, um, the scissors, cup of water, a bowl of some kind, a paintbrush, which is entirely optional. It just helps if you're not gonna, if you don't want it too messy, or a plastic cover and a plastic cover for your table or a plate of some kind so that you can work over because this is very messy of a craft. I'm gonna say one other thing, if you're doing this craft at home, and then I promise we're gonna get started. If you're doing this craft at home, is um, you can actually add one drop of, and I mean without our kit, you can add one drop of food coloring to your water, or, um, sorry, to your glue or your water, 
and you're going to get colored tissue paper, essentially, right? Because the glue and the water will combine and then you'll add the, the napkin and the paper towel and that will make a colored paper towel, which will make a kind of, um, you know, kind of cool to do it with if you don't want just white. Okay, so, so happy to have you all here. First thing we need you to do is we're going to have you open up your, your glue. So this is assuming you have our kit. You're going to open up your glue bottle, glue bottle from the base of it. Okay, not the little top part, but from the base of it, because we're going to pour our water in here. So hopefully at this point, you've gotten your water. Uh, if you haven't, you're going to want to do that. You're going to set your cap aside, put that aside, and you've got this glue bottle. Be careful, because if you tilt it like this, it's going to fall, it's going to fall, and you're going to get glue everywhere. So you want to go get some water. Okay, so I have our water here. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to um, pour your glue in, I'm sorry, your water into the glue. And before you do it, I know I just said to do it, but before you do it, notice that there's about, if you hold your glue bottle up to the light, it's about halfway, you can see with the light showing through, it's halfway filled with glue. So you're gonna try to get the rest of that, not to the very tippy top necessarily, but just the rest of that, you're gonna fill that with water, okay? So here you're gonna fill your glue bottle with water. You do it very slow because this will get everywhere. Okay, it's better if you have a measuring cup is ideal. And then, so once you've got your glue, um, you're going to cover that up. Once your water is in your glue, you're going to cover it up. And then this is the fun part. Hold, make sure this top part is sealed, please. Make sure the top part sealed. Make sure the black part sealed. Put your finger over the top just in case. Always a good idea with glue. And then you're going to shake it up. Okay. And what you're making is what's called a glue wash. Half water, half glue. And it thins it out a little bit. It's not as thick. We're essentially doing a paper mache craft. And that's better with some a glue wash than with just glue. Now I'm going to tell you the reason why you want to put your finger over the lid is because one time I didn't do this. And I was shaking a bottle of ketchup. Anybody want to guess what happens? You can tell me or you can put it in the chat. I bet you can guess what happened to the ketchup. If you guessed that it went everywhere, you are correct. The ketchup went everywhere. So always put your, hold your glue on the top. It's right, exactly. It, it went everywhere. I just did this and and then it just went everywhere. So we don't want that, that to happen with the glue. And certainly your parents do not want that to happen with the glue. Now I'm just going to put in the chat um, the items that I mentioned that you need if you don't have our kit. Um, uh, so that is now in the chat. Okay, great. And then one last thing in there is jewels. Okay, so now part two is... I want you to, um, or, or I should say step two, okay? Is I want you to take off, um, I want you to take, uh, take your box. So you have our kit, I want you to take your box, okay? And in my case, my box has some stuff inside. So I'm gonna take that out, save that for later for a different craft project. So you're gonna take the lid off your box. You're gonna set the bottom aside for later. Now, in theory, you could paper mache both sides, but if you do that, the lid is not gonna stick anymore, okay? So, it, I mean, it won't go on anymore because the bottom will be too big. So we're just gonna paper mache the top part and you don't have to necessarily paper mache inside. We're just gonna paper mache the outside, okay? So, um, and you can always paint this bottom later on so that it looks pretty because the paint won't, once the paint's dried, you'll still be able to put the top on. Just the paper mache gets a little thick. Okay, so. Let's see, our next step is you're going to take, decide your pattern, decide your tissue paper, what you're going to do with it. I have to warn you one thing, when you work with this tissue paper, it's gonna crinkle up. So don't expect for, you see how beautifully flat your tissue paper is? It's not going to look that way when you put it on. Once you get glue on this, what do you think is gonna happen to this? It is going to crinkle up, okay? And that's okay because that's the beauty of this kind of a craft and that's why we're using tissue paper. So it's going to crinkle up and that's why you have a lot of pieces 
Because if you didn't have all those, if, if it wasn't going to crinkle up, you could just take four pieces and you would cover it up, right? You wouldn't even need four whole ones. It would cover up. But because it crinkles up, you're going to um, need a lot of it. Now, think about your design. But while you're thinking about your design, like what kind of color you want to use of the colors you have, I also want you to separate your pieces. And I want you to make, you could take a plate or you can take a bowl. Actually, I, I'm going to suggest better in a plate. I'm going to use what I have over here. And you're going to put your, oops, go ahead and put, separate your paper. Because if you have it all stuck together, then you're just going to get one big clump of paper. So you're going to separate your, your little pieces of paper a bit so that you can grab a single one or a couple of them at a time. Okay, and you're going to do that with all the colors that you want to use for your craft. And if, if they're not separating easy, you can do something like this and just kind of crinkle them and then they'll start separating. So separate those, put them all over the place so that you can pick up one at, at a time. Okay. And here, I'm going to show you what my plate looks like now that I've separated them. Here, I'm going to put it over here. Whoops. There you go. So that's what my plate looks like. I've separated all my tissue paper. It means they're easy to fly away. So now is not a good time to sneeze. Okay. Don't sneeze right now. So, okay. So you've decided what tissue paper you're going to have for your, uh, what, which of the colors. I uh, love the emojis. Can't get enough of the emojis. Um, you're going to pick your tissue paper. You know what you're going to use. So you have your color idea in mind. Now you could make stripes. You could make an outline with one color and have the inside be another color. Remember, you also have the gems. So think about where you want your gems. Okay, you could just use one gem. You don't have to use all of them. But kind of think out what your design is going to be. And then make sure you're going to save some tissue paper for the sides as well. Okay, so we have our glue wash. We have our tissue paper. Those are the, the most important pieces. Be careful if you kind of have to move that plate over like I just did, hold the top of it or it's going to fly away. Um, and then you can even do a flower. My my kids did a flower last time um, with it. So if you're an older child and you want to do something more complicated, um, great. Or if you're particularly good with your hands, great time to do it. So think about for a minute what you want it to to look like and kind of map it out. You can put your tissue paper in different places and plan that out. While you're doing that, I want to take a moment to try to um, talk about some, some folks that have helped us try to solve the problem of food waste in the past. And so one of the, one of the folks who've helped us solve some food waste issues is the folks who help run food, um, food banks. Um, and, and these are like services that help to reroute food that would be wasted um, to people who don't need it. So remember we said that there's people who have what's called food insecurity. They don't have enough food. And so this these kind of food banks like um, City Harvest, which was founded in um, 1982, help to get the food that's being wasted to the people who need the food, which is great. And particularly, they get food from restaurants um, to help feed the food insecure. Um, and, and I was talking to a waiter recently who mentioned to me that it was really a shame how much food, as a waiter, you kind of see it, how much food people wait, waste. So they order a lot of food and then they don't end up eating it at restaurants. Um, and obviously you can't give away food that's been half eaten, right? So that only has to go in, into the trash. And that's, that, uh, is what the, you know, the waiter was saying he was sad about. Um, there's also several well-known books that have been, um, written, one is called The Omnivore's Dilemma, and that one was written by uh, a gentleman named Michael Pollan. Um, there's another one that's called, um, um, there's a book by what well, actually the gentleman, it's called, um, it's called, it's nicknamed The Zero Waste Guy. Uh, and he helps companies to reduce their waste. So that's great. He goes into companies that want to reduce the food waste. Um, and zero waste, this kind of concept um, that his book is, is named after, refers to the idea that people could, in theory, conserve uh, with reasonable production and consumption and reuse and recovery um, their food so that there's no waste of food. Um, there's, there's different theories about how to do that. So imagine, you know, living a life where absolutely no food got wasted. 
Uh, and then there's another company I wanted you to, to tell you about, which I think is the neatest thing, is called Misfits Marketing. And it was created by CEO Abhi Ramesh. And what they found, what has been found, is that people don't like, um, love the heart there, uh, heart emoji, thank you. People, what people have found is that when people go to supermarkets and they buy fruit, they look at the prettier fruit, which is funny, right? That there's pretty fruit, fruit. So, but that means that fruit that isn't as pretty is less likely. Yes, Mr. Yes, try. Um, Diana put in the chat that they really want to try the Misfits Market. I encourage you to give that a go. It's, I mean, I haven't used it myself yet. So I, I you know, I don't know really much about it, but I love the concept of it. And it's the idea that there's a lot of quote ugly fruit, you know, that's perfectly edible. It just doesn't look as pretty that gets wasted. And I remember my grandmother had a garden growing up and I loved eating all of the food out of, food out of the garden. And I remember that the cucumbers were always like strange looking, right? Not like we are, see them in the supermarket now. They're always like, you know, a little oddly shaped sometimes, right? So, um, so anyway, do keep that in mind. Um, but while we are um, looking at our materials, uh, we're going to keep in mind some other things right now. Um, and one thing I want to mention is that you can cut your um, tissue into shapes. So I'm just going to show you, right? If you want, for example, to have a heart in the middle of your box on top, you can go ahead. And if you're younger, you can ask maybe your, your guardian who's ever there with you, you can cut a heart out of your tissue paper. And you can eventually, you don't want to put it down first. It's going to actually be one of the last things you put down, but you can actually have a heart on the top of your tissue paper. I mean, of, of your paper mache item. So think too, if you want to do anything like that, you can do stars, you can do hearts, you can do flowers. Um, so you can do that as well. And that's a good reason to have that scissor there. Um, again, be careful with the glue because it is something that can ruin a table. Um, let's see where we are. Okay, so um, what I want you to do is, there's a couple of ways to do this. Because this is what you're going to spend the most of your next time, the rest of our time together, this is what you're going to be doing. Dipping your paper or combining your paper and the glue and then putting it on your box. That's what you're going to be doing for the next 15 minutes or so. But I have to tell you, there's a few different ways you can do it. And it depends on how much you hate being yucky with the glue. If you don't care about being yucky with the glue, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your glue, you're gonna open the top of it, and you're gonna go ahead and squeeze it out into your bowl. Okay? Okay, I've got my I've got my bowl here, and I'm just squeezing the glue out into the bowl. Okay. If you're going to do it that way, this is what will happen. You're gonna take a piece of your oops, I'll do it over here. You're going to take a piece of your tissue paper and you're going to put it in it. Try not to get your fingers soaked, but you see how much glue is on there? I see how drippy that is. You're going to get your fingers soaked. It's just hard not to in this craft. So, and then even if you didn't get your fingers soaked, putting it in, you've got to push it down on your box. Once you push it down, you're going to get your fingers soaked anyway. So if you do it that way, there's no way around getting your fingers soaked and that's okay. It's good, I should have mentioned, it's good to have a towel nearby. And I wish I had thought of having a towel nearby. If only a towel would magically appear before me, that would be absolutely fantastic. So having a towel magically appeared before me. Thank you, magic towel. I love it when that happens. <laughs> so here is my first little piece. Let me see if I can get, it's hard to see on that. Let me see if I can get you to see it over here. Yeah, you can see it better on the second camera. So you see, that's my little paper mache starting. <laughs> the other way you can do that, you can do this, is you can just take the nozzle of your, of your glue and you can take your, I'm going to stick with my purple, take your purple piece, okay? Do this over, over your bowl and you can put the glue right on, whoops, right onto it. You just want to get a little bit of glue. Oops, I thought I was doing that on camera. Here you go. Take a little bit of glue and put it right on it. Use the nozzle to mush around. 
use the nozzle to mush around the um that the the tissue paper and then you can put it on there again you're still going to get your hands dirty a little bit because you have to push down once once you have it the tissue paper on here you still have to push it down i don't it's a different style i'll just put it that way it's a different style if you leave it bulky it looks different than if you ultimately flatten it out because if you flatten it out then when it dries it's going to be it's going to be flat if you leave it bulky then it's going to be kind of puffy and more 3d which is a fine look you can even intentionally do that and have one color be like a background and then another color be more of a 3D element, okay? So those are two options for how to do this. There is a third option. So you can pick whichever style works for you. The third option is you can put the glue directly onto your, your box. Okay, so you make a little, here, I'll show you here. Make it a little puddle, okay, on top of your box. And then you take your piece of paper and put it on there and then do it. If you didn't want as many, um, what do you call those wrinkles? If you don't want as many wrinkles, then that's the best way to do it. So you don't have a lot of wrinkles, but ultimately as you flatten it down, it's still gonna, it's still gonna get wrinkles. So, oops, sorry, as you're flattening it down, oops, where am I? Here you go. As you flatten it down, you're still, there you go, that's better. You're still gonna get some wrinkles. So those are your three ways to do this. Either, any of those three ways is an entirely fine. And you're just going to keep doing that until you do your pattern. I'm going to do mine too, as I'm talking to you and telling you a little bit more about food waste. Um, I am going to keep adding my own and I'll try to do a combination of which style I use so that you, you know. I'm going to, for my pattern, I'm going to do a background that is um, purple and then I'm going to make my main top of it I'm gonna make my main top green, okay? So here you go. Let's see, here we go. So I'm gonna keep putting that on and you're also gonna to wanna to do the sides. Yeah, you also wanna do the sides right there. And you have to just mat it down as you're doing it. Try not to let it go over the side. Uh, I'm sorry, into the inside of the box. If it does, it's, it's fine. A little bit on the inside won't matter too much. And there you go. So you're going to keep doing that while you work on that. And if you have any questions as we go along, please be sure to just put them in the chat or unmute yourself. Let me know. If I don't notice it in the chat, Mike or tech person is going to definitely let me know that there's something in there. So while you work on this, I'm going to tell you more about food waste. So fun fact, if you can imagine a fun fact about food waste, fun fact is that um, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration estimates that um, confusion over food labeling on food, the way we label our food, accounts for approximately 20% of consumer food waste. And you probably don't know why that is, but I'm gonna tell you, sometimes food labels use language like um, ex expiration date or best used by or sell by. And for those different, um, different whatever they call it, one of those three things, they actually mean different things. So, so sell by versus use by versus expires on are three different things. But oftentimes people think of those as, oh, I have to use it by this date. So imagine something that says sell by and you're saying, oh, well, I definitely can't eat this anymore. So now you throw it out because you think it's it's expired when that's actually not what that that means. So it's good for um, you to definitely be aware of what those those terminology mean and that they're different things help us save that 20 percent in food waste. Also, I wanted to let you know that in 1917, that was over 100 years ago, can you believe it? Over 100 years ago, there was a book that came out. Um, called The Jungle. And some of your parents or guardians might know what that book was about, but it was about the food industry. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of rules about the food industry and what folks could or couldn't do in the food industry. And so because that book came out and kind of shed some light on that, that was when the US 
Food Administration was created in 1970. So over 100 years ago, we've got this agency that helps to protect us um, and try to monitor to make sure our food is safe. So, and a, a food being safe at each um, each level of the, I don't know if you folks know what that means, supply chain, the food supply chain. So let's let's just talk about that for a second. So I don't know if you've heard that word. So the idea is that you know how does it get? How do you get the food to your own table? Oh, we're so happy we have Rasika here. Thank you for coming. Um, and joining us, and you'll be able to watch this video as well. We always send out our video at the end of our craft. Um, uh, within usually, we try to get it out within a few days. Um, but if you have our kit, I think you'll be able to follow along, kind of see me in in the cameras how we're how I'm um, taking the tissue paper and putting it on the box and flattening it out. You kind of see. Whoop, there you go. So, um, but if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. So in the food chain, right, it doesn't just, the food just doesn't come to us, you know, um, like that towel did. Somebody just suddenly brings <laughs> brings food to the table. Instead, what happens is um, it starts with the food being produced. So it starts with the farmers who respond, who, who, are, who also um, help preventing food waste. Um, but sometimes farmers do something called dumping which is a shame and what that means, but sometimes necessary. Um, so that means that they, when the market conditions off of the farm, that is like, you know, who's going to buy the um, the food from the farmer, um, the selling price, I'm sorry, the buying price uh, of an item or the amount of food that's needed that people are willing to purchase if people aren't willing to buy the food at a certain price that, that is a living wage for the farmers, or if the food is, is gonna get thrown out at the store because there's not enough people buying it and they just happen to have a really big crop that year, um, it could lead to farmers throwing out edible food that could have been sold in the stores and that's called dumping. Um, and so even at pretty much every step in that food, chain, food supply chain that gets it from the farmer to your plate, whether that plate's in your home or in the restaurant, there could be places where we could have, uh, we could be saving food. So you folks um, have a lot to do here with your craft. I just wanna take a minute to say, here's mine. This is where mine is. I have a nice background on it. It's starting to get a little puffy because I ended up using a lot of, of the tissue paper. If I had used less, it wouldn't have been as kind of raised up. But I pretty much covered all the areas. You'll notice too, I don't know if you can see this camera. Yeah, let me do it on this one. You'll notice too that there's some places it's darker than others. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know, patina is the right word, but it has a kind of different coloring in different areas. And that's kind of the beauty of this craft too. You want that to happen. You don't want it to be all the same color. As you make multiple layers, the, you know, the color will be more, let's say in my case, it's more purple as we add different layers. If it's thinner, it's not gonna be as, as dark purple because some of that brown from the box is gonna show through. Um, right now it looks a little bit white on camera, but that's just because the glue hasn't dried yet. Once the glue dries, the glue is gonna dry um, white uh dry clear and so that purple is going to stand out a whole lot more um i'm also going to now start to do my green and what i'm going to do with my green is i'm going to show you a different technique is i'm going to ball up my green ahead of time and so i'm going to add it as a 3d element intentionally to it so sometimes this happens accidentally when we bowl it up too much but i'm doing it on purpose so I'm going to put the green on my corners, okay? So now it's definitely intentionally, it's in like this little ball on the corner. And I'm going to do that uh, all around, I think, until I run out anyway, until I run out of my green. The other thing you might notice is that because your hands have the glue on it, you don't actually need to like really grab your paper. You can take your finger and you can just <laughs> do that. And... And it's fun, first of all. I'm sure a couple of you out there are trying this right now. And you're going to go ahead and um, ball up the green. I'm, I'm sorry. And, and then you have to use your finger to get that green off. Yeah, not to get the green off, to get the tissue paper off. So there you go. So I'm kind of making a little pattern on the top of mine. 
So while you folks are working on that, I wanted to mention too, um, that we can help avoid food waste in our own homes. Uh, one of the things is we can grow our own food because we're maybe more likely to waste if we're relying on the food from the supermarket and then it might go bad. But if we grow our food in our own home, then um, we we know how much we have. We can plan for any extra. We can give extra to our friends. Uh, I know right now at my house, I have a really big basil plant that's growing. Uh, and when my mom comes over next time, I'm going to give her some basil to take um, so that I can I can share that and then help somebody else reduce um, food waste as well. Um, there's also other ways to I'm uh, sorry to reuse and repurpose um, our food. So maybe uh, you have leftovers and you can use that in a soup, for example, right? So there's lots of ways that you can, you know, if you research them in advance, let's say ways to reuse, let's say you have some leftover broccoli, you can you can search or you can have your family search ways to reuse broccoli in another recipe. Um, and so even coffee grounds can be put to good use. Um, and that's good because people drink on average three cups of coffee a day. So you can imagine how much um, coffee grounds go to waste. And you can find a lot of different ways to reduce, reuse coffee grounds. Now, I'm going to take a, men uh, a moment right now to just mention my, my tissue paper is kind of starting to get stuck together. And that's okay. So even if it, your lots of different pieces get stuck, you can either... Um, just rip them apart, so rip them apart like this, or you can just make one piece that's just bigger, which is fine too. So, um, but you will notice that things start to get stickier towards the end of this of this craft. So I'm putting my pieces in the middle, uh, over here, there we go. Okay, so while you folks are doing that, let's see, hopefully you're done with your or starting to be done with your um with your box you can see my your box top you can see mine here i've got this cool pattern on it uh, i'll show you on this camera as well and i did have two more things i uh, one more thing i want to do i want to take the little heart that i had from before and i'm going to put it on top of my box uh, i bring it over uh, what i had before so I'm going to have, when that dries, there's going to be a heart in the middle. Okay. Um, maybe I shouldn't have put that green underneath. I thought that might be a good, good idea, but maybe, maybe not. We'll see how that looks when it dries. I'll show you on this too. So I'm going to have my pink heart on top of that. We'll see if that stands out. I'm not sure if that was going to be enough contrast the way I designed it or not, but we'll see. And then the next thing you have, the, the last kind of step in this is your jewels. So if you have our craft kit, You've got some jewels here. And I'm just going to picking them up right now. A little hard to pick up, but I'm picking them up right now. So you have some jewels. These are the ones that my kit came with. Okay, or if you're doing this at home, you have some jewels at home, no doubt, uh, that you can put on. Or you can put on, like I said, some cardboard cutout, anything like that. Uh, probably my little heart here, which is very hard to see right now, would have been better if it was, um, if it was a cardboard cutout. I actually don't think my heart is going to work out very well. I'm going to take off my little heart. I'm going to take off my heart. I don't think that's going to come out well. So, okay. So I'm going to have this empty spot. So now that makes it empty in the middle. Okay. So in that case, what that now leaves room for. See, and the nice thing about this craft, one of the nice things about this craft, the downside is it's messy, but the plus side is because it takes a while for the glue wash to dry, probably it won't be dry till tomorrow. So I wouldn't really touch it too much once you've got the design you want. The, the thing that you can do is because it's um, it doesn't dry quickly is you have some time to fix things if you don't like it. So you can move things around like I just did. I changed my mind about my little part that I had made and now it's easy. It still looks great. Um, and I can use my next, I can do my next strategy, my plan B, which is to use my jewels. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of my jewels Right in the middle, you're going to dip your jewel into the glue wash is one way to do it. Or you can go ahead and just put the use the glue bottle and glue the back. 
of your of you know just use the glue put the turn your turn your little jewel excuse me turn your little jewel over and put your glue right on to the jewel itself that's another way to do it but then you will have your um there you go okay you will have your box with your flower right in the middle of it and mine's kind of it looks like a flower garden perhaps and i've got some greenery in there maybe for the leaves or that's the grass so then when it's all said and done you're going to put your box top but i wouldn't do it now while still wet you'll put your box top on top of the box bottom and you'll have a beautiful way to save save some items that are meaningful for you for example you can save the extra jewels and put them in your box for a later craft. So you can use your box for the extra jewels. And there you have it, everybody. You have your, your box, however you ended up trying it, trying to make it. You have your box with your jewel on top. It's gonna dry really pretty. You'll see, I would make sure that you, I'm just flattening, flattening out the sides a little bit uh, to make sure there's nothing really sticking out. If you did use a scissor for the anything that was glued, I recommend you just washing your scissor right after. Otherwise, that will be a little harder to take off. But that's it. Love to see what you all came up with. I'll show. I'll keep mine on camera here so you can see it while we're while we're finishing up here. But I hope you did enjoy this event. I'm happy to to see any if you want to show me but otherwise um we're so glad you came with us today we're, oh can i see oh and you had green just like my oh i love it you had green and purple just like mine we we had we shared the same idea to use both of those colors together i love it that looks really beautiful thank you so much for sharing Thank you, folks. That is fantastic. Thank you. So yes, we are so glad that you came and you did this graph. I hope you had fun doing it. Um, there's so much to learn about this topic and we want you to continue. We always say that at our events at Inform Your Community, they are not one and done topics. The idea, oh, can I see another one? Let me see the other box. <gasps> oh, that looks great. I love it with the ones on the corner. That's fantastic. And you have a blue flower just like mine right in the middle. I love that. Good job. Thank you. Excellent. And so, yes, our, I don't know if you folks saw my, my box just dipped in the glue, but it's okay. It'll be fine if that happens. A little glue never hurt anybody. And I, like I said, I did this craft because I wanted us to remember that it's important to save things, right? So um, like the Tupperware, we save our food. So, and then we can eat it later. So thank you for participating in this craft. This is not a one and done topic. There are so many more things that you can do um, to help inform yourself about this topic. Educate yourself about um, food labels, like what does best used by mean versus some of those other things that we talked about. Um, so please do that. And also um, when you're at home or you're in a restaurant and you're taking your serving for your plate, don't take more than you think you could eat. Having said that, make sure you do take what you can eat because we want you to grow up big and strong. So please do eat lots of food and just make sure that you um, you don't take more than what you eat, what you can eat. You can always go back for seconds as well. And I encourage you to do that and um, make yourself nice and big and strong. So um, please do, um, you can also have family style meal, meals um, where you know everybody has a, a, a kind of a little bit of everything. Those are fun and you, you can... Um, when you're making it in bulk, you may be less likely to waste it than if you get indip individual portion sizes of things. Um, and take leftovers home and be sure to to use them. I often I, um, I'm in New York City, and you know if I'm coming home from a restaurant with leftovers and it's something I'm not sure I'm going to eat, I'll make sure that I, I if I if I happen to occasionally um, see somebody who's um, uh, who's homeless or who unhoused, um, I say, okay, would you like this? And and I'll give my leftovers to them. So that way, at least, you know, people are being fed and people are making use of the leftovers. So um, I also, you know, also good to try to live a sustainable life where we can live without wasting our resources um, so that we can, you know, have a future for everybody. Um, 
So our email that you're going to get after you've attended this event is going to include a survey of what you thought of this event, but we also have a survey we're going to have you take right now. If that's okay, we're going to put it on screen. These are completely different questions than the survey you're going to get tomorrow. I mean, uh, sorry, when we send out our email. So we're going to put that um, survey up for you shortly. And if you could just take that poll, it'd be really appreciated. We can, um, we're going to send you uh, our email as well that has a completely different, also very short survey. We uh, really appreciate your feedback on the event. Um, in addition, I wanted to let you know that we have another, oh yeah, Too Good to Go. Diana mentions Too Good to Go is something to check out. And honestly, Diana, I cannot believe I forgot to mention that because I have that app and I love that. I love Too Good to Go. Um, uh, the, uh, it, which is, which is, I really do like it. It's, um, it's in a lot of communities. I don't know if it's in all of them. Um, but I encourage you to check that out as well. I do love my too good to go. So we have another children's crafting event coming up in about a month and it is going to be our, um, on, uh, celebrating national peace officers day, national peace officers day. Um, I believe, oh, I meant, I meant to make a note of it. I believe it's on the 15th. But you might have to check that. But National Police Officers Day, um, we are going to be celebrating um, by making a Lego crepe, uh, cape craft. It is a super fun craft. You can actually use it with real Legos after you've made it. That's going to be on May 20th from 1, uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. And um, I'm going to encourage you to check us out then. And please... Um, know that the shipping materials as always are free and we send them to you free and, and the event itself is free. So please do um, sign up for that event celebrating police officers day. The topic is going to be community policing. Uh, also uh, you can check out our other celebrating create topics as well as our other our celebrate and create events as well as our, as our other events on our website at www.formyourcommunity.org. Please come check that out. And our next event is not a children's event. It's an adult event. It's a much to discuss game night event. I encourage you to check that out online as well. And I and that is coming up this Thursday. So you can check out online on our website what that topic is. Please like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Please consider donating uh, as that helps us to defray the cost of um, shipping out those kits. Um, and also please, please tell your friends